experiment with this. I have no idea if it'll work or not. Um, but book nine was officially released this morning. Uh, and the lion. I'm very, very excited. So I've put up, uh, well, the start of a new series called Thramas, the Graveyard of Heroes. And we start with the Dark Angels uh, showcase. Um, so this is a, a amalgamation of all previous uh, Dark Angels tutorials that I've, uh, Dark, Angels tu Dark Angels commissions that I've completed over the years. Um, I thought, looking back at the Horus Heresy, that's what I've been primarily been painting for the past 10 years or so. It's nice to do a little bit of a reflection piece on it. So here, here's the reflection piece on the Dark Angels I've created so far. Um, so one of my favorite short stories, one of my favorite stories of the Dark Angels, especially during the Age of, of Darkness, is Savage Weapons by ADB. And there's a wonderful moment in it. I won't spoil it for you, but there's a wonderful moment in it where the lion comes up with a very unusual turn of phrase. Loyalty is its own reward. And it's one of those phrases that it's so easy. I mean, that's the meme, right? Dark Angels, you... Um, a, a Dark Angels are, are traitors. Mm, okay. Um, so, uh, I wrote this a day before Book 9 went live. It's already out of date. And I wanted to try and pin down exactly what I thought of the Dark Angels at this point. And it's the sort of question that hopefully gets answered in the book. But up until this point, we've only had hints of their character. Uh, so, first of all, they're ancient. They are the first with traditions predating the formal formations of the legions. They developed the Principia Bellicosa, the imperial way of war, especially for the Astartes, developing strategies that would be adopted by other legions in time. They had to pioneer the, the spear tip. They had to come up with the Day of Revelation. The, 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 the rites of war that would go on and be specialised in other legions, well, the first pioneered them when there were no such thing as other legions. Uh, the colour black as well, it's... In imperial hierarchy, I guess in in uh, that that's why chaplains are black. Let's let's alter my thoughts here. So black. If you wear black in imperial service, you are acting on the behalf of the emperor himself. Chaplains wear black; they are ordained by him in in the age of darkness, underneath his uh, direct auspices. I guess. Uh, alongside this is crimson and gold. That's why the custodies. Uh, in sign of servitude to the emperor, they wear these deep, lus uh, deep robes and lustrous golden armor, Oromite armor. The Dark Angels, when they were created as a formation, they had uh, they were called the Angels of Death, and they had the uh, wing symbol with the blade running through it. Um, one of the questions I've always been curious about is the Dark Angels, the original Dark Angels, their gene seed was that only taken with Lionel Johnson's gene seed, or were they a mix? So could you have maybe, uh, I don't know, a dark angel, okay, this is heretical, a dark angel with uh, Lehman Russ's gene seed? And would that dark angel go on to develop the rights of war? Except, yeah, that's that's always been a bit of a law that's, that's confused me. Anyway, I'm sure there's a very clear answer out there, I just haven't considered or, or read. Um, but one of the most enduring legacies of the first is the variety of tech available to them. And this is one of the things I love, I absolutely love about the Dark Angels, is that they get some really unusual technology. Stuff that was used in the Terran Wars, in the uh, original Solar Wars, and then was prescribed. So technology that would, I guess, bend or warp uh, a time or, or reality. So these weapons, some of them are still in the stores of the first. And we are seeing a couple of uh, it, it, indications of that. Uh, the special character, one of the special characters that they have, has a blade that's been made over time. It's, it's had portions bolted to it from worlds that that Praetor or the Dark Angels had slain. How metal is that? How big is this blade? It must be huge. Uh, but you get the most esoteric of weaponry that you could possibly imagine uh, for the Dark Angels. Um, and they pioneered the use of war tech independent of Mars uh, and still hold relics of old night prescribes all but the talents of the Emperor. So the talents of the Emperor, the Legio Custodes, uh, the Assassinorum and the... Um, 
Scissors of Silence, these agencies get the most forbidden of technology. Uh, Drathic Weaponry, for example. That if a Drathic Weaponry is found anywhere within the grounds of the Imperium, you either give it immediately over to the House of the Imperium, or your entire world is wiped out. It's that big of a deal. So knowing all this, or knowing a little bit of the information and the storylines, how do we approach painting them? Well, black. Black is one of those colours that it can be just as expressive as any other hue that you paint. And I'm sure I'll get ripped apart for that statement. But I don't care, I'm, I'm used to making stupid statements. I've made stupider and I'll make stupider ones in the future. So black, how do you enliven black? One of my favourite tricks to employ is to paint the miniature in shades of grey. So from dark grey to light grey. Then over the top of that you add a filter layer. And a filter layer is a very, very thin down layer of turquoise over the top of the miniature. And this brings out so many more notes of characterization. Now, that's just at the very basic stuff. If you are looking for an introduction into enlivening your black or to uh, the, the, I guess, more complex processes of miniature painting, that's a fantastic place to start. Because everybody needs to paint black armor at least once in their life. Once we gain an understanding of how cool and warm tones interact with one another, how we can develop volumes, how we can develop different textures on a miniature, we can start to talk about overlapping different... So uh, with this example you can see on the screen, it's been built up from a desaturated... So uh, desaturated means um, it has quite a lot of uh, grey or black added to it, or white added to it. So this is a desaturated low value. So that means uh, all colours exist on a value scale from black to white with shades of grey in between. So this is, uh, I guess, one like low value pure black. So this is a desaturated low value uh, grey. We've added more white into it to build it up, added that filter layer. And then we've used notes of... Um, yellow in the highlights. We've uh, glazed purple into some of the shadows. So not only can we introduce turquoise in those top highlights, we can introduce other colour ranges as secondary reflections. However, as an introduction, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, if you're looking for a base introduction into painting your black armour, Start with your usual recipes and then glaze a layer of turquoise over the top and see where that leads you. Okay, so we have a uh, breacher squad. So these were painted oof, quite a while ago. Um, the uh, There's little squares. The name escapes me right now. I'm going to feel like an idiot watching this back. The, um, the, the little squares on the miniatures. So these were printed out on a laser check printer. Uh, you could buy... Uh, the decal paper, it, it's its not great, it does leave silvery lines behind, uh, you do have to paint over the top of it to get rid of it. Uh, since then I've just moved over to using a pen and the amount of time it takes to get the decal perfect on the miniature, you may as well just have painted already. So when it comes to painting uh, these miniatures, I haven't found a more effective system than simply just painting them on. So you start with a grid pattern, you black them in, correct it with white and go from there. I wish I could offer some deep insightful trick but uh, I can't. Okay so veterans made from uh, the 40k kit. Now when using 40k kits uh, there's, there's arguments that could be made whether it's legal or not but the dark angels here I think they're pretty secure. They're pretty fine. You, you're not going to uh, get any arguments with the armor plates or anything like that. Uh, so here, when you see Dark Angels in robes, it's very much based on the knightly orders of Caliban. Uh, Calibanite knights, uh, they are a monastic, or they were rather, a. are we talking future, past? Oh, it's so hard to locate it. Okay. The Calibanite culture, let's go direct, let's go present, are a monastic order of knights. So... Games Workshop back in the 80s and 90s, they used to love taking two concepts, smashing them together. With Blood Angels, it's Vampire Angels smashed together. With Dark Angels, uh, they've been through a different process over time. It, it, it used to be uh, Knights and uh, Cherokee Indians smashed together. 
for the Deathwing. Uh, and then it was uh, Monastic Knights and Knights Crusading Knights. Smash those together. And I guess over time, the first have just incorporated all these different cultural influences into them. Um, leading to a very esoteric range over the years. Very unusual range. But here, we have uh, very much Caliber Knight warriors. So whenever you see the monastic robes, that's what it's an indication of. If these were Terran, they would be uh, slightly more boring. Uh, they wouldn't have certainly this... The, the, they might have the robes. I'm talking in generalities here. Just, just as like a flashpoint, as, as a rough rule of thumb. Because you need to learn the rules before you learn how to break them. So if you see a Terra Marine, they might have more uh, lightning bolts. Uh, they might have the Raptora Imperialis, uh, which is the, the eagle head with uh, lightning bolts streaking off them. That'd be a really cool way to go. Uh, alternatively, you could do them as Lutherites. So uh, Dark Angels that are closer associated with uh, Luther and Caliban. In which case, with the black armor, you may want to incorporate more notes of green into the armor um, to, to represent that. Um, if they are more Terran, say like Astalan's troop, you might want to incorporate more blue into the shade. Lots of different things you could do with the green. Okay, plasma. Plasma glow effect. Uh... This is done right at the very end with an airbrush, so it's painted exactly the same way, uh, only I use uh, blue-green from Vallejo, or turquoise from Vallejo, and using a brush, I paint in the uh, plasma coils through the centre, take an airbrush, airbrush turquoise around the surrounding area, and airbrush white in the middle. You want that overspray to hit the armour plates and, and do really nice things to them. Okay, what else do we have here? Ah, Leviathan! I need to track down more photos of this thing. This is the only photo I could find online of this commission. And it's driving me crazy because I love painting this miniature. Uh, it was an independent piece. Uh, the decals on there range from the uh, 40k Dark Angels set to the now OOP, the now defunct Black Shields decal set from Forgeworld. And that's where the sword and serpent symbol comes from. Really unfortunate that that's gone out of production, but... There you go. Uh, now with this piece, because it's much larger, you don't want to peak the highlights as aggressively as the Space Marines. Because we're working in such a small area with the Space Marines, you can go really large with them. You know, you can you can um, really peak the highlights. You can show off a little bit with them. But with this, the, the surfaces are broader. You need softer transitions between them. And... You can see, even though turquoise has been involved in the top highlights, we've introduced notes of green from the underlit, from the underside. So we have two light sources going on there. Um, but again, don't want to complicate two things too much. Um, if you're beginning miniature painting, stick with one primary light source, and then once you start to develop, try and have a look at introducing secondary light sources into your work. Uh, Okie dokie, a plasma glow effect, because... The Dark Angels, they got this reputation, I think, in third for having lots of plasma weaponry. And I think it was because of the <clears throat> uh, White Dwarf editor at the time, Owen Reese. He had a Dark Angels army just festooned with plasma. Now, I'm not sure. I... So reading the White Dwarf when I was a kid, I can't remember whether it was because of his influence that they ended up with more plasma weaponry or whether this is something... Uh, in in a much earlier book, I do own the Angels of Death Codex, but I'm much more fascinated in the Blood Angels side of things. Uh, I've read it a few times. I'll be reading it a few more times before uh, painting a Lion Commission. If there is any information out there, please, please, please let me know. I'd love to know uh, if there's a back history to this. I'd love to be corrected because this, I mean, this is an interest for me. This is my hobby. Um. Yep, the fist, by the way, the uh, checkerboard pattern uh, decal. You can see it doesn't sit quite correctly on the fist. That's why I would encourage you to paint those little checker pattern. Checkers, that's the word. Checker pattern. I would encourage you to put the checker pattern on rather than... Uh, uh, I, I suggest that you paint it rather than decal it on. Because when you come to a curved surface, you end up with all sorts of troubles. And this Legion Praetor. Now, this was actually painted, the majority of it was painted by a student of mine. Um, you know who you are. I'm not sure whether he wants me to mention his name or not. Uh, 
something I should have talked to before doing this video, really. But you know who you are. But 90% of this was done by my student. Sent to me, and then I give it a bit of spit shine, a bit of spit polish, to show him how to introduce secondary reflections, how to peak highlights, exactly when you want to push gradients and when you want to pull them back. A very mighty fine job he's doing of them. And he is doing a Dark Angel army. Uh, and I'm sure you won't mind me going through his inspiration. It's something we've been chatting through in our lessons. Um, oh, if you are interested in lessons, by the way, a brilliant segue to a plug. Uh, at the every quarter, I open up new online painting courses. Uh, so you get in touch with me and we spend around 40 to 50 minutes talking about your project or I'll show you how to paint something. Uh, phenomenal, especially in 2020 is time of recording where you can't uh, be be around other people but unlike uh, classes in person it's individualized to you every, every week every couple of weeks you get a private tutor talking about subjects that you want to sp uh, specify in and alongside that uh, there's a feedback loop uh, so when you paint you send me pictures and we're able to develop you as an artist if you are interested new places open every quarter time of recording uh, September 4th, that's on the 1st of October, I believe. I need to double check that, but it's coming up very, very soon. Uh, check out littlelegendstudio.com uh, for more details. But if you didn't want to, if you unfortunately, because places are so, so hard to get, uh, there's only so many hours during the week I can dedicate towards teaching. Uh, if you were interested in developing your own painting, we have hundreds, hundreds of painting tutorials, as well as a full Dark Angels course uh, from characters to uh, infantry and the line will become very very soon okay enough plug okay the Horus heresy army he is planning so we've been talking about what drew him to the dark angels why exactly was he interested in creating an army well i dare say it's primarily because of the hype he's a bit of a hobby butterfly if you're listening to this you know you know you are you're just jumping on that bandwagon no, uh, it it was mainly the forbidden Terran tech side of things. It wasn't so much like the monastic side. It it's more that they were the first primogenital legion from which all others formed. Um, and we imagine that his warlord is Terran, ancient Terran, one of the first warlords of the Adeptus, uh, Adeptus, sorry, of the um, Astartes project. He helped pioneer a lot of these rites of war. And in his convalescence, in his old age, uh, he's taking a little bit more of a backseat to things, but he's still an incredibly effective battlefield commander who knows how to employ the most devastating weaponry available or in the arms of mankind. His task on terror was to hunt enclaves of witches, the most debased, horrid of humanity's kind, mind psychers the the most deranged you could possibly think of psycho indoctrinated witch kind and alongside this crusade he's a bit of a witch finder witch hunter alongside this crusade was a heavy contingent of sisters of silence to help manage the breakthroughs and exploit any gaps it is very very advantageous advantageous to have anti psychers if you're fighting psychers so the force, as it developed into the later portions of the Crusade and now the Horus Heresy, he kept this tradition. They kept, they kept this this particular force kept this tradition that bonded alongside this vet, these veteran units. Are what, I guess bonded serfs or bonded lifeguards, life wards of Sisters of Silence. So we'll have Dark Angel's commander. And his life ward will be a sister of silence. Even though this doesn't translate exactly in game, this does, however, translate in law, in the fluff. And I think that's far more interesting route to take when creating an army. To create a theme first, a story, and then tell that story through the miniatures. We'll find a way to adapt the rules to this story. And that's that's what we wanted to do. That's what we're going to do together over the next couple of months. I want to flesh out a little bit more than that. Uh, but until we get the, the book, we don't know which direction. But that's the basis of the law. Okay, Breachers, I think we've just come around to the end. And that is it for the Dark Angels discussion. 
Okay, another plug. Uh, if you are looking to book a commission, please feel free to contact us. There's a contact portion on the page right here. Uh, if you were interested in learning how to paint uh, this black, if you did want to develop your skills, uh, there is a full uh, 4K video tutorial on how you paint Dark Angels uh, troops as well. There's uh, So it's a Blood Angel Dreadnought, but this was the test for my uh, lion recipe. Um, so you have the Sindias Dreadnought, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I mean, it's black and red. What more could you want? Um, and there'll also be a character tutorial as well, coming very, very soon, as well as the lion, which includes a full 4K series of video tutorials, a series, multiple video tutorials, as well as PDF guide to take you through every single aspect of the painting process. Thank you very much. That has been the first Thramas, the Graveyard of Heroes, showcase. What would you like to see next? Night Lords? Or Dark Angels? Something different? Okay, thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.